what's going on guys there's this white stuff everywhere i can't figure it out but uh we gotta move drop our trailer and then this knucklehead there put his trailer in the wrong spot so we're gonna get out negative 18 degrees and help security out and make prime look good talk to you in a minute A little editor's note I gotta throw in here. Happy freaking New Year! Forgot to throw that in there. God bless. What is going on, guys? As you saw from the intro clip, I'm cold, but I'm good. So, to the new subscribers, welcome. Usual suspects, welcome back. We are in Crete, Nebraska, where I think it is above negative temperatures right now. So, that's a positive. But uh, this is a two-part video that you'll like, I think, with the how did we get here. So, told you I had that load out of doll heart with cheese. We ran that over to Carthage, Missouri, and it said you could arrive to your appointment 12 hours before your appointment time, and they had overnight parking. Like, well, get there, take a 10-hour break, and get unloaded, right? They got there 11 hours early, and the appointment was for one o'clock in the morning, and I got there at two in the afternoon. The guy says, pull into Doc J, we'll get you unloaded. 45 minutes later, your boy's empty. I'm like, heck yeah. Submit to payroll, thank you very much. We'll take that load. So we go to, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. We're out of hours because we've driven it all the way from Dollhart. That's why I went out to the pilot, got me uh, some sleep, and I got me a load, preloaded, 10 miles away in Joplin, going down to West Memphis, Arkansas. I mean, it don't get no easier than that, right? So, go over there, got up the next morning, hooked it, headed on down to West Memphis. I delivered, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna get my days if you the following morning. I had a day, 300 something miles, got it down there, made me some more good money, got that holiday bonus. I'm like, all right, sweet. So, we get done in West Memphis, first thing in the morning. It's Friday morning, that's what it was Friday morning, it was New Year's Eve. We got unloaded, no problemo, and I said, hey, it's New Year's Eve. We need you to bounce to Omaha, Nebraska area to get your next load for New Year's Day. Like son of a gun, 711 mile bounce. But guess what? Pays a dollar a mile and I'm empty. It's like a dollar an hour. So, ain't no thing but a chicken wing, baby. We'll get up there. We'll roll on up to, uh, roll on up here and say, you know what? Stop in Springfield. And I will uh, get my washout done there, get a 30 minute break at the terminal, and then roll up on into Nebraska, sleep Friday night and get up Saturday and head on over here. So I get to the terminal and anybody who's been to the terminal knows you got inbound and they check everything. Hey sir, did you know that there's this crack in your tire and we stick the screwdriver in it, it leaks air. You just got jammed. So don't stick the screwdriver in there, it doesn't leak. It's not giving me any air warnings. It goes, yeah, you gotta get that fixed. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's all good, baby. It's all good. We're rolling. It's money in the bank. We're all on profit loads. Get on up there. So I have to wait. The dude at the tire shop, shout out. He worked me in, so I wasn't there too long. But I said, hey, I'll take my 10-hour break. And I'll leave 2 o'clock in the morning on Saturday and get up here to Nebraska. I said, okay, okay. So did that. Get to Kansas City. It starts snowing. Now, I'm in Texas, South Louisiana, so you know I'm like I got I had to pull the the seat out of uh, certain places, but eight hours and about six of it was in snow, and I mean no roads. It's New Year's Eve, right? They're, they're just snow. I'm, I'm I can see the rumble strips. Just so that's how I even know where the road is, right? But I get up here and I get parked. I go check in and they say, oh, your load's not ready. Oh, and by the way, it's New Year's Day. They're not coming back to work till tomorrow. You just got jammed. What I also didn't tell you about this load is it's going to California. 
Anybody that knows my feeling in California, that is an instant reject for me. I can't stand California. I, uh, anyway, personal reasons. But when they sent me the load, I'm going to make them an offer to kind of refuse. And so I was like, well, it's New Year's, it's freight slow, it's the weekend, I'll take it. So that's why I took it. So I was like, all right, well, I'll get a 34 in. It's now Sunday, and I'll get my load this afternoon, and I'll head on out to California. And I'll deliver this load instead of Tuesday. I'll deliver Wednesday, so it'll still be on this payroll. And I had to go to Walmart. I had to get some groceries. Walmart's five miles away. I got out of Walmart and said, oh, I lost my receipt. Let me go back in and try and get a copy of my receipt. Go back in, sorry, can't help you with that. Somebody used the machine. You don't have your receipt. Get in the truck, start driving. Messed up my 34. <laughs> but I can't put the clip in there because I jammed myself on that one. And anybody who's been here long enough and ELD has screwed you up somehow. Luckily, I have good recaps. So I've been sitting here anyway, the load wasn't ready. So... The load is in the dock. It's being loaded. We're in California, deliver it Wednesday. And we'll have a little over $7,000 week this week. So, of all the things I can complain about, I can't complain. I'm just grateful because, you know, I'm grateful I got to almost get a 34 in. They had parking. I didn't, I mean, when I was driving in the snow, man, it was like pucker, 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 and I got here, man. And then it's just like. But that was awesome. <laughs> Because I love the snow. I'm like skitty, you know, a, a schoolgirl when it comes to snow. Just because I don't ever see it that much. So, and it wasn't too bad. Um, you got to get used to it. It's part of driving, right? So, but the real question that I asked in the title of the video is how did I get here? And I want all of you in your free time to say, how did I get here? Why am I here? Why am I out here? Because, you know, when I had that load out of West Memphis and they said hey it's a 700 mile bounce to somewhere in Nebraska and the only load we really got is going to California and you look at all this I had the option to go home but the reason that I didn't go home I would have been home on New Year's Eve and spent New Year's with the family and got a load on Dallas out of Monday but the reason I didn't go home is because I love my family and while that's an oxymoron to a lot of people it's because I know how I got here but see I'm a man of God, and then I, I try to say that everybody does their own thing. I try not to force into my videos, but believe it or not, this I'm going to own my own truck fleet. I'm going to own my own truck. I'm going to own the freight I want. I didn't get here because of, of because of a Christian, because of being a man of God. Uh, I believe that I'm on the path that God wants me to be. But the reason that I got here was because I got frustrated. That is why I'm sitting in this driver's seat. I don't know why you're where you're at, but I'm here because I got frustrated. I got frustrated of going to the job and being told when I could and couldn't take lunch. I got tired of, of going to the job and being told, oh no, you can't go, go see your kids' uh, little award ceremony. This is work time. You have to be at work. I, I got I got t frustrated. I just got I got so, so sick of everybody telling me what I could and couldn't do when I know what God has for me and I know the plan that I have. And so the reason that I'm here is because I got frustrated. I got frustrated with watching people drive what I thought my wife should be driving. I got frustrated with my kids asking for things and going, well, let's see what next paycheck looks like. I wanted more. I got frustrated and I got so frustrated. My brother and I talk about this all, the pain level, right? You may not like your job, but the pain isn't too bad because, you know, it's right down the road from you. You get off on weekends. You know, you, you don't, you're not frustrated enough so you don't change. I got to the point where I was so frustrated, I was like, this doesn't work anymore. So that's actually how I got here. Now, God's blessed me. I feel I'm on his path. I believe he made me frustrated so that I would get here. But I didn't get where I'm at with these plans because, oh, I just didn't have anything better to do. It wasn't some great epiphany that I had. Like, oh, I wonder what I shall do with my life. It really wasn't like it. I got pissed off. That's how I got here. And so I'm sitting here in the freezing cold Nebraska having the time of my life because I'm not frustrated anymore. I get to determine, for the most part, where my truck goes. I get to determine the amount of money because I determine when I go home. I get to determine how long I stay home. I'm working towards even more freedom. But let me tell you, my frustration and where I'm trying to go ain't easy. This ain't the easy route. 
And let me tell you, I don't know many people. You may know some that work six figures and make six figures that work Monday from Friday, eight to four with an hour lunch break off on weekends and never think about their job. I'm not talking about my life is going to get easier. Like I got frustrated and I'm on easy street. I got frustrated and get to get me where I'm trying to go. And hopefully you get frustrated. But I'm hopefully when you're frustrated, you can also quit. You know, oh, this just isn't worth it. I'm just, I'll just, I'll just go work for the man. Be the man, don't work for the man. Because as I heard it said one time, you will spend your entire life making your dreams a reality. And if you don't do that, you will spend the rest of your life making someone else's dream a reality. I believe that was Les Brown, so I'll finish it off with this Les Brown quote. It ain't over until I win. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say, you can count on me and they don't come through. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's very important as you hold on to that dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. That's just where I'm at right now, guys. So I'm out here. I'm gonna have a great week. I got to experience snow. I had some things happen. I had some good things happen, but I'm grateful. I'm just happy to be alive. Hey, there's a problem trailer. I wonder if that's mine. Huh, doubt it. But anyway, I'm gonna end this video. I'm gonna watch the Cowboys game, roll out to California tonight. So, God bless. Let's get rolling and uh, maybe I'll go order a 2023 Peterbilt. Who knows?